Hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com and today I want to talk to you about the essentials that you're going to need for crankbaiting. Now, if you're new to crankbaiting or if you've been doing it for a while, you're going to pick up a few tips, hopefully more than just a, a couple. But these are the things that you absolutely need to know for crankbaiting. I'm going to talk about the rod, reel, and equipment, some of the modifications I do to the, my crankbaits before I even use them. And then I'm going to go through the different techniques and retrieves to use for most crankbaits. First, let's start with equipment, starting with the rod. The rod you want is a, is a medium power, moderate to fast action tip. Something that looks like this. See this? See how it bends like that? That's kind of what you want. You want that nice long bend, par parabolic bend, not like right up here at the tip like some rods. Nice long rod. That's what you want. You want that kind of give. It's for two reasons. Number one, yeah, it makes it easier to cast lighter crankbaits, but also, it has that give. These crankbaits have little treble hooks on them. And if you use a rod that's pretty stout, that gives leverage for the fish when he's fighting back to be able to pull free of those hooks. So you want a rod that's kind of a spring, gives a, gives a little bit when he does those surges, to be able to keep that fish locked up and get that lunker to the boat. This combination here is an Akuma Helios rod with it paired with Akuma Helios Air Reel. Great combination, even though on this rod, sometimes with rods, you know, you got it says on the side, hey, this is a crankbait rod, this is a jig rod. This doesn't say that exactly, but it has those characteristics of a great crankbait rod. The other thing I have on here, if you notice, this is a mini guide system. Little teeny guides on it. And the reason why I have these on here is because they're much more sensitive than other, other guides. The closer to the to the blank, there's less of a lag there, so that there's less distance for the vibration to transfer to the blank, so I can feel everything. And you might think, you know, well, if you're crankbait fishing, the fish, when he hits it, he just wallops it, and he's about ready to rip the rod right out of your hand. Well, that's true in some instances, but a lot of times, those fish will come right up, they'll, they'll swim behind the bait, and they'll mouth it. They'll just grab it and immediately feel that it's not natural and blow it right back out. And you might not even feel that. Sometimes you'll, the vibration of the crankbait will go from a tick, 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 tick to a thud, 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 and, and it'll change back to a tick, 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 tick. That's it. That's all you feel. Or sometimes just the cadence of the vibration might change a little bit. And so a real sensitive rod is essential to pick up on those things. So when you're selecting a, a bait casting reel, you want one that has like a six to three or six to one gear ratio or higher. This one in particular, this is the Akuma Helios Air reel. It has a seven, three to one gear ratio. I like that for two reasons. Number one, when I make that long cast, the first thing I want to do is crank it down really fast and get that crankbait down to a running depth and then slow it down so I can get it down faster with a higher gear ratio. Also, what I like is sometimes I like to burn back the, uh, the crankbait, like a vibrating crankbait, burn it back really fast. So a higher crank, uh, a gear ratio helps me do that. The other thing is I use for the line, I use fluorocarbon line. I like to use Tatsu uh, uh, Cigar line because fluorocarbon has a lot of different advantages for crankbaiting. First of all, like I mentioned with the sensitivity, fluorocarbon is really sensitive. And so you're gonna feel the, uh, all those vibrations that I just told you about. Also, fluorocarbon is more abrasion resistant. Now I mentioned, or I haven't mentioned yet, but I'm going to, is the different areas you wanna fish. You're gonna be throwing in stumpy fields, you're gonna be throwing in logs, pilings, rock piles, you're going to be fishing riprap, things like that. And this line's going to be draping across all that. And it's going to get nicked, it's going to have some fraying and abrasion, you can't get away from that. But Seaguar fluorocarbon line is much more resistant to that than other, other uh, lines. And you might think, well, why don't I just use braid? Well, for crankbaiting, really what you want to use is fluorocarbon because fluorocarbon is not as buoyant as other baits, other lines. As a matter of fact, it, it kind of sinks. Whereas monofilament, copolymer, braid, it has buoyancy to it. And those lines are going to prevent the lure from reaching its maximum advertised depth. Fluorocarbon, on the other hand, it sinks. It's not as weighted line per se, but it does sink. It's going to allow that bait to get to its maximum depth. So we've talked about the line. We've talked about the, the, uh, the rod. I'm going to talk a little bit about the reel. This is a bait casting reel. I'm using 12 pound test line. Freshwater spinning reels are great for 10 pound test and lighter. I like to use 12 pound test and heavier, and that's what bait casting gear is designed for. It's also like a winch, 
and when you're cranking all day long, that power winch, it makes it easier to, to crank and you're not gonna get as fatigued. I'm using 12 pound line because thicker diameter line, it has you know a heavier diameter line, 15 pound, 17 pound on higher. It has a thicker diameter, it has more resistance in the water. And that again is gonna prevent the, the bait from reaching its maximum depth. 12 pound is what I wanna go with. So you might think, well that logic Hey Glenn, why don't you use eight pound test, six pound test? Well, as I mentioned before, you're gonna be bringing it across rocks, stumps, logs, those type of things, and that lighter line isn't gonna hold up to that kind of abuse. 12 pound is about the minimum that you wanna go with. So that's, that's a good all around all purpose line. 12 pound fluorocarbon, again, it's straight fluorocarbon. I don't use any leaders on it. That's why I can get away with using the mini guide system here. I don't have to worry about any knots or anything trying to get through the guides. All right, so that's that's the equipment. Let's talk a little bit about the, the baits themselves and what I do here. First off, with a, when you get a bait, you want to check the hooks. You want to check the hooks for two things, strength and sharpness. Take the hook point and drag it across your fingernail. If it scratches it, great. If it tries to ding it, dig into your fingernail while you're scratching it, even better. You want ultra sharp hooks. If they feel really dull, that's not a very good quality hook. Now, of course you can sharpen it, and I know how to sharpen them, I can do that, but if it's dull right out of the box, that tells me it's made out of a soft material, and that hook is gonna dull up a lot faster. Also, what you might wanna do is take a pair of pliers and see if you can't bend the hook point out a little bit. Don't wrench on it, because every, every hook will be able to bend at some point, but if it takes relatively ease for you to bend that hook point out, uh, that hook out, that's not a good sign. Because if you've got a nice lunker tied onto that crankbait, if he makes the lunge, he's apt to straighten that hook out and get loose. So for those type of hooks, I replace them. I just get some you know, number fours, number six, uh, round bend treble hooks. And you can get them, you know, Gamakatsu makes them, and, uh, Mustad makes them, they're all good quality hooks, but I replace them. And again, not all hooks need to be replaced, but check them just to make sure, and those that need to be replaced, I definitely do. The other thing I do is I remove the, uh, the split ring. I take them right off. I don't like split rings for a couple of reasons. Number one, the knot tends to find itself right where those wires connect and it rubs against the line. It can break the line. The other thing is I don't think split rings give the, the bait enough movement. They don't allow it to, to move as, as freely. So what I do is I replace it with a snap, just like that. I put a snap on here and I use that for two reasons. That snap is a little bit bigger than, uh, than a snap, than a uh, split ring. So it allows the bait to, to move a lot more freer. Plus, with a this, with this snap here, I can swap out baits really easily. While I'm out there fishing, I don't have to bother with retying. I just unhook it, drop the bait, put another one on there, I'm ready to go. It's real fast and easy. Very effective way to, to, to crankbait fish. All right, so we've talked about the equipment, talked about some of the modifications. Now let's talk about the different retrieves that are most productive for crankbaits. Now obviously the first thing you can do when you get a crankbait is just chunk and wine. Just throw it out there and bring it right on straight back. And that can be very, very effective. Very effective way of, of catching fish. But a quick couple of variations on it, if you're, if you're fishing and you haven't got a bite, Ooh, then you can go. do two things. You can just speed up the retrieve or slow it down. Smack that. Simple as that. Sometimes they just want it faster, sometimes they just want it slower, and that's a great way to catch a lot of fish. Another thing that you want to do with this is you can uh, dig it in the ground. If you're fishing, say for example, six feet of water, grab a crankbait that dives 10 feet or deeper. And you want to dig that bill into the ground. Even if there isn't anything there, it's just straight, flat, muddy bottom. Dig it into it and you want that bait to deflect and, and deflect off things and go, go off in different directions. It's especially useful if you've got rocks. If you've got rocks that's banging on those rocks and it's bouncing off them going different directions. That often triggers a bite. Even when the fish aren't biting, this is the cool thing about it, bass are instinctively programmed by nature to attack injured and, and disoriented bait fish. And that's exactly what you're mimicking here. The, 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 the bell of the crankbait will hit a rock, it'll stop for a minute, and then it'll go off in a different direction. And you keep doing it, bang, 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 bang. It looks injured, it looks confused, and that's what triggers a bite. Often when the fish aren't even in a feeding mood, they'll, they'll hit it anyway. That's what I call force feeding the fish to, to bite. So that, if, if you're doing that, and say for example, you're in deeper water and you don't have those things to bang into or you can't get it deep enough into the, uh, into the uh, ground, you can mimic that just by a stop and go retrieve. Watch my hand, are you going along here? And then you stop, crank it, stop, crank it, stop. That's all you're doing. Very simple, 
and, and, and doing it radically. Don't, don't like crank, 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 stop, crank, 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 stop. Just sometimes you make five cranks, sometimes you make two, and then you stop. And the longer you pause changes, you want that erratic behavior. Don't make it a methodical retrieve. Just erratic behavior. And that can be really good. The fish is following it, follow, 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 and suddenly you stop it, it's right in his face and he has to react to it. And a lot of times you get a bite right when you pause it. Another effective retrieve is the sweep retrieve. This works the same sort of principle as stopping that bait, but this time you're using the rod to do it. Cast it out there, crank it down a few feet, and then just pull back with the rod. As it pauses, you want to reel up the slack. Pull back with the rod, it pauses, reel up the slack. You can do it at different speeds. You can do it really fast, really hard, but you know, practice with it. Try different types of retrieves and, and figure out what the fish want. It's funny because they'll hit it on the pause. You often set the hook right when you sweep the hook or sweep the, uh, sweep the rod. That's kind of a cool way of doing it. Now the next retrieve, <clears throat> that involves a different kind of bait. And that is a vibrating or a lipless bait. I like to throw Savage Gears soft vibes. Those work really well. But any type of vibrating bait works. What I'm talking about are these little guys. Let me put this on real quick. Like I said, it's really easy to change them out with this. I love these soft vibes. Look at this. <laughs> See, it's, 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 it doesn't have rattles in it, so it doesn't give away any unnatural sounds. But look at that. <laughs> it's very soft. So it, it looks really soft, uh, uh, natural in the water. But with these, these type of baits, when they fall, they fall straight down and they vibrate as they fall. Use that to your advantage. What I like to do is what's called a yo-yo retrieve. You throw it out there, let the bait sink, let it sink for a little while, and then what you're gonna do is bring it up and let it fall, just like that. And then bring it up, and as it falls, just reel in the slack and let it fall. Then bring it back up, and let it fall, bring up the slack line. A lot of times the fish will hit it as it's falling, and when you reel back on it to bring it back up, you actually automatically set the hook. <laughs> it's kind of a cool way of fishing. It can be very, very effective, especially in the fall when the shad are dying. That's a great retrieve because the fish are keying on those dying shad. And that's what it looks like. It looks like a dying shad. So an excellent retrieve. All right, so some of, that's some of the different techniques you can use. Again, this isn't super comprehensive. I'm not gonna get into all the more advanced techniques. That's another video that's coming. But these basic retrieves and all this stuff I just told you are essential to see successful crankbait fishing. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down on the comment section down below. And as I always say, for more tips and tricks, visit BassResource.com. For the answers to all your questions, visit BassResource.com. Hey, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And if you want to watch more videos like this, click one of the images on your screen right now. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.